It's so nice to be with you tonight. We are going to start our service sort of in a, in a, um, in a folksy kind of way. Rabbi um, Lockett and I are going to lead us in music, which will be fun. <laughs> Hine Matov, how nice it is for all of us to be together. Please join us. Hine matov umanaim, shevet achim gam yachad. Hine matov umanaim, shevet achim gam yachad. Hine matov, hine matov. Ya la 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 la. Hine matov, hine matov. Ya la 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 la. Hine matovu manaim, shevet achim gam yachad. Hine matovu manaim, shevet achim gam yachad. We turn to page two in our prayer book to light Shabbat candles. We'll continue with welcoming Shabbat by welcoming Shabbat messengers of Shalom Aleichem on page 24. Shalom Aleichem, Malachi Hasharet, Malachi Turn ahead to page 20. We were welcoming in uh, Shabbat with light, who welcomed in the Shabbat messengers well, with the with Shalom Aleichem. Now we welcome in the Shabbat presence with Lechad Dodi. We'll be singing verses or paragraphs one, two, five, and nine. And when we get to nine, we'll rise, turn to the door to welcome Shabbat as if but we're coming in to our presence, and um, then we'll have an opportunity to greet one another. Sha oops, wrong one. I need to sing that. Le <laughs> 
Shabbat
<laughs> right? I don't know. I don't know. So we're going. We're going to. Um, we're going to now uh, turn to page twenty-two. You really need to help us with these. This music, Danny, Rabbi Schiff. Welcome back from Israel. I haven't seen Rabbi Schiff for two years. It's wonderful. You have a really nice voice, and we'll hope you'll like help to carry it. He is from the congregation, Beautiful. right? Okay. <laughs> and Elliot, we're going to count on you and Karen. Anyone out there who is in the choir, we need you. Please, more shiloh yom hashabbat tov lahodod la Adonai. Ulizamer lishimcha el yon. Ulizamer lishimcha el yon. Vagi baboker hastacha. Continue on page 26. Make the transition from Kabbalat Shabbat to the rest of the evening service.
You may be seated. On page 39. Standing on the parted shores of history, we still believe what we were taught before ever we stood at Sinai's foot, that wherever we go, it is eternally Egypt, that there is a better place, a promised land, that the winding way to that promise passes through the wilderness. Together, that there is no way to get from here to there except by joining hands, marching together. Continue with Micha Mocha on page 40. On page 42, we come to Hashki Venu, our nighttime prayer. We ask God to spread over us a Sukkot Shalom, a shelter of peace and comfort. 
We'll begin with Hashki Venu, and then um, we're just asking God to spread that shelter over all of us, and then we'll turn, pivot a little bit to Amisha Berach to remember especially those who are in need of healing of body, healing of spirit. We'll read those names, and then we'll um, conclude that way. Just the idea of having all of us underneath this canopy of peace, canopy of um, comfort in troubling times and times of illness or times of um, whatever, vulnerability, confusion, war. So we begin with Hashki Venu. Shabbat, we hold in our hearts for healing Ira Altschuler, Ann Barber, Howard Bregman, Kathleen Bond, Fern Diamond, Phyllis Didion, Ann Fay, Judy Forrest, Ken Franklin, Piers Haggard, David Mordechai Cohen, Naum Kaplan, Carol Kaufman, Sylvia Kasparowski, Al Camper, Lee Kramer, Albert Laprie, Susan Lother, Hinda Sarabat Khana Pearl, Sophie Matias, Joanne Mandel, Jonathan Miller, Edward Mims, Joanne Newman, Phyllis Oaks, Sanford Oaks, Till Oster, Lev Paderowski, Naftali Ben Riva, Helen Fay Rosenblum, Agnes Roche, Mike Rosen, Adam Schusterman, John Spear, Jan Stoller, Jackie Student. Other names from Misha Barak tonight? Misha Berach Avotenu, Vimotenu, Avraham Yitzchak, Vyakov, Sar, Rivka, Rachel, Valea, Huyevarech, Yerapa, et Hacholim. And we turn now to Vishamru, and we acknowledge and remember our covenant with God keeping Shabbat for all time. Vishamru v'nei Yisrael. Vishamru v'nei Yisrael et ha-Shabbat la'asot et ha-Shabbat Shamru, Vene, Israel, et Hashamat, 
We turn now to Tefillah, which begins on page 46. Please rise in body or spirit as you're able. silently with the rest of the tefillah through page 62.
Shabbat Shalom. I want to tell you about something I learned in rabbinical school. It was what one should do if a fire breaks out in their home on Shabbat. Remembering that according to Jewish law, one cannot do certain kinds of work, including carrying things from one place to another, what is a person whose home is burning down around them to do? The rabbis argued over whether or not the rules of Shabbat must be followed in this situation. They discussed very important matters such as when should one try to put out the fire, how many loaves of bread could be carried out of the kitchen, whether the Torah scroll should be rescued, and how many pieces of clothing can be worn when escaping the home. Perhaps it's this last one that is the reason why I remember this text from all these years ago. It seems strange to my classmates and me that among the gems of applicable rabbinic advice, the Mishnah provided the following guidance. When leaving a burning house, one may put on only 18 garments at once, as people sometimes do wear that number of garments, but not more. However, one may again put on that number of garments and carry them out, and he may say to others, come and rescue with me. Okay, so if I understand this correctly, to escape a burning house on Shabbat and hold on to some of their belongings, a person can put on 18 pieces of clothing and leave. Take the articles of clothing off outside, invite others to join them, and then run back into the burning structure to dress in 18 more pieces of clothing. As we sat there trying to make sense of this strange text, our Talmud teacher said the most astonishingly practical thing, that the details of the text were absurd and unimportant. It was the spirit of the text, the real message that mattered. In his words, Stop reading those ridiculous rules. Stop counting loaves of bread in your pieces of clothing and get what really matters, yourself and your loved ones out of that burning house. Sometimes details are helpful when finding a new location, when building something intricate or delicate, when solving a math problem or following a recipe. Sometimes the details get in the way preventing us from getting the real message. For example, take this week's Torah portion. In it, we encounter long lists of allowed and forbidden foods. Among the forbidden, the camel, the hare, the swine, the eagle, the vulture, all things raven, the ostrich, the nighthawk, the seagull, the mole, the mouse, and more. On the permitted list, anything with true hooves that chews their cud, anything that lives in water and has fins and scales, locusts of every variety, crickets, grasshoppers. Yuck, right? The text goes on and on, describing in exact detail what can be eaten and what cannot, what is considered to be pure and what is considered to be impure. Commentators wondered what the purpose was of this detailed biblical instruction. Was it meant to be the beginning of kashrut, an impetus for the vast collection of rabbinic dietary laws keeping kosher? Was it given for health reasons, especially since much of the text describes the impurity surrounding connecting with animals or contact with animals that have died? 
Was it about creating a routine or ritual, settling into a diet filled with predictable food? Or does this detailed instruction distract us from understanding what matters most, that being mindful of what we eat can lead to holiness? The biblical section with all these instructions ends with the following. For I, Adonai, am the one who brought you up from the land of Egypt to be your God. You shall be holy, for I am holy. Holiness, it seems, is our goal. And is kashrut, following the dietary laws, the means to reach it? For some, yes. For others, also yes, but not necessarily in the way we might think. In her introduction to the book, The Sacred Table, Creating a Jewish Food Ethic, Rabbi Mary Zaymor writes, we Reformed Jews do not shy away from using the term Shabbat, even though our ritual practices differs greatly from that of halachic Judaism. We still call it Shabbat. This challenges us to do the same for kashrut. We can embrace the term kashrut keeping kosher and broaden its definition to view keeping kosher not only as a ritual practice, but also as a multifaceted Jewish relationship with food, integrating values such as ethics, community, and spirituality into our dietary practice. For her, as for many of the contributors to the book, keeping kosher isn't only about allowed and forbidden foods. It requires a personal determination as to whether one chooses to observe all the details or instead to focus and understand the spirit, to focus on and understand the spirit of the law, the underlying message of the text. Kedusha, holiness, that underlying message resonates with me. I believe that it is possible to achieve the spirit of the law to adhere to the ideals of keeping kosher by striving to be mindful about what, when, where, and with whom I eat. Do I succeed every time? Absolutely not. But I keep trying, trying to embrace the holiness of healthy ingredients, delicious food, drawn out meals with loved ones, and the good fortune of having enough to eat. And once in a while, I do remember to thank God for this opportunity to bring holiness into my life. It doesn't come automatically, but with practice, maybe it will. In an article titled, A Holy Moment at McDonald's, Dr. Eugene Borowitz wrote, I dash out between classes to grab a fried fish sandwich at McDonald's. I am quite preoccupied. As I hastily unwrap the sandwich, I remember this time that it is my Jewish duty to say a motzi, a blessing, before I eat. Something inhibits me from doing that in McDonald's. If I say the bracha, the blessing, people will feel uncomfortable. So not wishing to be a public nuisance or, and perhaps because of my inhibi inhibitions, I say it to myself silently, which because of the noise around me isn't easy. If I let all this overwhelm me, I know that saying the motzi will not be very meaningful. So hoping to let its spiritual purpose work, I must become dead still, taking control of my frazzled self, center my soul for a precious minute, and then say the blessing. He continues. If I am to find the transcendent, the holy, even in McDonald's, I must do my part in seeking it. I make no claim that every time I follow this ritual, I encounter the transcendent. Although I have no special gift for spirituality, something does occasionally happen. Saying my motzi, my blessing amid the city rush, I sometimes again fleetingly but truly touch the ultimate, reaffirming in this instant what I believe and must yet do. 
even in McDonald's. I can almost hear my Talmud professor with his practical insight, stop worrying about which animals to eat and which ones to avoid, figure out how to make eating holy. That is our task, and that is the message that really matters. Shabbat shalom. We turn in our prayer books to page 282 as we rise in body or in spirit as we are able for Aleinu Lishabeach. of our loved ones whom death has recently taken from us and those who died in this season in years past and those we have drawn into our hearts with our own. This week we remember those who are recently deceased in this period of Shloshim, Kenneth Brand, John Erlin, Marianne Fisher Hess, Joan Friedberg, Robert O. Lampel, Ronald Weingrad, and on the occasion of the yard site, the anniversary of their deaths, Stephen Aronson, Samuel S. Blaufeld, Dorothy Bortz, Dr. Sidney N. Busis, Albert Edelson, Saul Fliegler, Aaron Friedland, Ann Friedland, James E. Glick, Lee J. Goldblum, Kenneth Goldsmith Sr., Norman Gurin, Edwin S. Hepner, Sylvia Horn, Sam Eisenson, Miriam Eisenson, Gertrude Kagan, Marvin Kamen, Ruth Loff, Hilda Lebowitz, Andrew Levine, Judith Maltz, Max Nathanson, Mildred Oppenheimer, Henry Posner Jr., Isaac Protek, Joseph Rubenstein, B. Schaefer, Louis Shapiro, Raymond E. Strasberger, Eileen M. Swartz, Erwin S. Turner. If I have inadvertently mispronounced anyone's last name or if there is someone who are thinking of that we should add, please say their names. Zichrom nam livracha, may their memories be for blessing. Yit gadal v'yekadash Rabba. Amen. Be'alma divara hirote v'yam lichma chute v'chayachon uv'yomechon uv'chaye d'chol be' Yisrael v'agala uv'izman kari v'imru amem Yehe shmei rabba mivarach le'olam olmei omaya Yit barak v'yishtabach v'yit pa'ar v'yitromam v'yitnase v'yit hadar v'yitale v'yitalal shmei d'kudusha b'richu La Ela min kol birchata vishirata, tush bechata vinachamata, da amiran bielma vimru amem. Yehe shlama rabba min shamaya, bechaim alenu vel kol Israel vimru amem. O se shalom bimromab, hu ya ase shalom, alenu vel kol Israel vimru amem.
You may be seated. In a couple of moments, we will conclude our service with Adon Olam on page 321 and Kiddush and Motzi. Uh, I'd like to thank Rabbi Lakatz for teaching us tonight. I, before I forget, Luke up in the heavens up there for making it possible for everyone to hear and see. Thank you to Don McGahan and to Rab uh, Cantor, Laura Berman for music tonight. Um, a few announcements, actually. Uh, tomorrow morning is the bar mitzvah of Alberto Gildinger's, tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock. Um, Alberto is a seventh grader at Falk Laboratory School, and we, so which meant that he was here every day for one and a half school years, um, and so that was nice, and now he's gonna become bar mitzvah. There are two Passover opportunities. Um, they're, out, they're outlined in the Shalomogram. One of them is to be paired with um, a, a host or to be paired with guests. That's called Seder Partners. The Sisterhood is, uh, is conducting a Seder on, I believe it's the 20th. The 20th, yeah, April 20th. Um, that is not just for women this year. Anyone is invited to attend. Um, and all that information is on the Shalomogram. We sent a letter out today, so everybody now should know about Molly May and her family leaving the city to move to North Carolina, where it's sunny and warm and where family can be closer together. We'll be celebrating Molly and her family on June 17th, so if we keep saying that, you know, hopefully we'll get as many people as possible to be here to thank Molly for all of the, uh, so, well, it's not really possible to thank her for everything that she's done for us, but we'll attempt to. We will make a start at thanking her for everything that she's done for us. So we'll turn now to uh, Adon Olam and Kiddush and Motzi. Page 321. Adon Olam Asher Malach
Douche is on page five. Here's some water for you before you try to attempt that. Baruch Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Borei Beri Agafen. Baruch Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Asher Kishanu B'mitzvotam Eratzavanu, Veshabbat Kodesho B'yahava Uvratzon Hichilanu, Zika Please uh, come up and get a piece of challah if you'd like. And um, if you would be so kind as to take your siddur, your prayer book, to the table as you leave. Baruch atadonai Eloheinu melech haolam hamotzi lecha min haaretz. Amen. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. <laughs>